In 1960 to 1961, the first course in sanitary engineering took place at our institute. Now, exactly 50 years later, three of the graduates of this European course in sanitary engineering return to their alma mater. Bill Ferguson from the UK, Erling Solberg from Norway, and Gerard van der Kroon from the Netherlands, aside from taking a tour of the current facilities, they discuss the institute then and now, and developments in their field over the last 50 years with current UNESCO IHE students. Ms. Amila Hodzik from Bosnia, Ms. Benli Ramirez from Mexico, and Mr. Sidney Mudenda from Zambia. I was um, uh, then at uh, the waterworks of Oslo, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a young engineer. He had uh, he got the opportunity to go to Deft yes. on this course, but um, something happened. He was not able to go to the, this course, mm -hmm. and. Um, I was a colleague with him, and he asked me if I was interested, and uh, I really was, of course. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was a lucky man. I uh, was appointed to Mostertman, and since I met Mostertman, and I finished my study at the uh, Deha University, Mostertman. Um, promised me take this course and afterwards you be employed by the university. I, I think I said immediately, yes, I do. <laughs> so uh, he and he and I <laughs> we stepped into the course and uh, I was his, uh, his first uh, assistant. Just where I, I, I saw of this particular course, I cannot rec recall now. No. I, I was not sponsored by my firm or my uh, country, but I managed to raise half of the funds myself, and then I, the Nafik, Queen, Jul Queen Juliana, <laughs> came, came up with some additional funds, and that was why I, I got here, yes. I commented to my boss that I wanted to study abroad, mm -hmm. and he he studied a short course in IHE, so he was the uh, one who recommended me to come. I have colleagues who work for the water utility within uh, the city where I stay in Zambia. Uh, they started from here, so when I talked about uh, sanitary engineering, they recommended this place, so then I applied. My, my boss, I talked to my boss and he said that I want to do MSc. And um, he basically told me there are some options, and uh, he recommended Aichi, and uh, I applied for Aichi, and that's how I found out. The audit of 95 was our, heart, our lecture ground, mm -hmm. and every, everything else we had to go somewhere else for, and like Erling and Gerard, I was much impressed by the sheer scale and equipment and the cost of the things going on in the laboratory. But uh, we have to think, these things are fine at laboratory scale, they have to be done perhaps on pilot scale, and then before they can go out really out into the world. At first, I'm surprised how big it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm also surprised to see the area, the, the laboratory area, mm -hmm. and also the equipment um, um, uh, which are at disposal f for the students. Today it was very many new instruments I haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. So I was a little surprised, but uh, also satisfied to find it had been a positive development. Yeah. At that time it was goose cozy, small direct contact with the staff. We met the staff consisting of f four people, 
Um, they gave us the lecture notes, uh, the professors the same. They were uh, very good contacts. So it's all on a small scale mm -hmm. that had this uh, that had this uh, special as aspects. The, as far as I remember, in mm -hmm. Delft uh, '95, there were two floors and there were classrooms. Mm -hmm. That was it, and with little lockers to which, which you could collect our notes of what was to happen and so forth. And we got tea or coffee one time in the, in the morning and the afternoon. Otherwise, we went to the chemistry laboratory, as Reichunde, as it's called there, and we did a very basic uh, type of laboratory there. We did titrations and so on. Yes. Not always successfully. But always out, outdoor, huh? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also microbiology, which I was much more impressed really with microbiology, except we were doing things in microbiology on a Friday evening, mm -hmm. and we were going home almost screaming mad. <laughs> <laughs> after the day and these uh, tests with respirometers and whatnot, of uh, which I was not very successful, I'm afraid. <laughs> and then writing up the notes on a Sunday afternoon or something like that, uh, trying to get it ready before the next one, that was pretty heavy going in that particular side of it, I think, yes. Uh, maybe a long time ago, the, the idea of recycling was not there. It was like end of pipe approach. You just treat and dispose, that's all. You don't think of bringing back the, the, the effluent or you utilize the effluent. But nowadays you have to think of uh, recycling mm -hmm. and getting whatever you can get from the, uh, from the West. Well, uh, I was here 60, 61 and then 64 to 68 was when I was appointed to a post for the design and the management of construction of treatment works. That was my last hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. Thereafter I became at arm's length experience from the government and a big change in regional government took place where big regions were formed which were so big that they didn't want anybody to tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the, they have to, to speak to the government to be allowed to do it, to get the borrowing consent to do it, but they didn't really want uh, you to interfere too much. There were also small ones, of course, where we could advise a bit. But it's also a time of change in that the North Sea oil developments were coming on at that time. So, and these were particularly in remote parts of the country, in the Highlands and the Orkney Islands, the Shetland Islands, where they're very basic infrastructure. Of course, when you have sea all around you, you just put the sewage into the sea, of course, and big waves and tidal wallops about, and it, the sea can treat it. Mm -hmm. But the population was growing, and water supplies were a particular problem. So I was more involved with, in many ways, with water supplies for small communities. And along came the European Directive, of directors, of course, wanting high standards from the toe of Italy to the northern point of Scotland, and Norway stayed out of it, of course, happily mm -hmm. for them. And regardless of the resources you had, such as sea all around you and big waves and tidal currents and so on, you should still treat it to the same standard as somebody in the middle of the Ruhr. Yeah. Uh, also, you were saying about not creating uh, drinking water out of sewage treatment. Well, not exactly that, but creating uh, drinking water out of the water at Rotterdam or the Thames, for example, it's not far off. Uh, creating drinking water out of sewage treatment. They, as they say, it said in the Thames, it's people, the water yeah. treatment, water has been through uh, maybe ten, 10 sets of livers or something like that, or whatever it is, so before it becomes treated and becomes water for more people to drink and so on. Yeah. Basically, before I think that uh, it was mostly about uh, sewage network collection of the, of the wastewater and uh, just disposing it. And also now it's more like uh, like treating the wastewater, uh, tr wastewater treatment plants, and a lot of uh, processes that are involved inside of it, and yeah, and actually preventing it to be uh, like separation of the wastewater. I don't know. That's that's my like between two. Mm -hmm.